The first step for learning any new technology is the classic Hello World example. In this lecture, we'll get Angular and all of the dependencies installed and simply print something out to the screen. Okay, so before we get going on our application, we're going to need to install a few things. We're first going to need a text editor, and then we'll also need a local web server so that we can serve the application as if it were out on the internet somewhere. We're gonna need the AngularJS framework. And then next we will need Bootstrap, which you might be familiar with. We're gonna use Bootstrap for styling the application. And we're finally going to need a package called UI Bootstrap. And you can kind of think of UI Bootstrap as the regular Bootstrap framework, but customized for AngularJS. So like we said, we're gonna need a text editor for our work on this application. And if you don't already have one, I'd highly recommend Sublime Text. It's a great text editor with a lot of versatility. You can get it over here at sublimetext.com and you just have to go to the download link to get it for whichever operating system you're on. We also said that we're going to need a web server and I'm on a Mac, so I'm using MAMP, which is Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And to download it, simply go to the download link and follow the instructions. If you're on Windows, a good solution is WAMP, which is Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And if you are on either or Linux, another good option is XAMPP or XAMPP as some people call it. Again, just follow the download link and follow the instructions in the wizard. We're not actually going to be really using the MySQL or PHP portions of these web servers, but the web servers themselves will let us serve the files for our application as if they were out on the internet somewhere. Now, when it comes to actually getting the code for the frameworks that we'll be using, there are a couple different options, but we're gonna keep it really simple and use the content delivery networks for each of these frameworks. So here we are at the angularjs.org homepage, and what we can do to get the CDN link is if we go to the download button, we see it's listed here under CDN. There are many different ways that we could actually pull in the code for AngularJS. We can download the files directly, either minified or uncompressed. We could use a content delivery network, like we said, or we could use a package manager like Bower or NPM. But again, keeping things really simple, we're just going to reference this CDN link for our project. So we'll grab that in a second, but let's take a look at Bootstrap next. We can get the Bootstrap CDN links right here on the Bootstrap homepage. And for UI Bootstrap, which again is the Bootstrap framework but customized for AngularJS, there isn't actually a CDN link right on their website, but we can actually get it if we go to cdnjs.com. And cdnjs.com is sort of a repository for different CDN links. And if we search UI Bootstrap, we see the first hit here is Angular UI Bootstrap, and that's exactly what we need. So here it lists, there's four different links. We can get the minified or unminified versions of both the main JavaScript files and also a set of templates that we'll need for UI Bootstrap. And we will probably just grab the minified versions of these. Okay, so that's all of the CDN links that we'll need for our project. We'll bring them in in just a second, but first we need to set up our project folder structure. And if we go over here to the Finder window, that is if you're on Mac, we'll go to Applications and down to the MAMP directory, again, assuming that you are using MAMP, and MAMP serves all of its files from the htdocs directory. So we'll need to create a new folder, and if you're anything like me, there's no space left to right-click to create a new folder, but we can do Shift-Command-N, and that gives us a new one. We'll call this ng-cribs, and then we'll just want to drag it and drop it into Sublime Text. We'll need two files to get going with, the first being an index.html file, and this is gonna be the HTML entry point for the application. So let's save that as index.html. And then we're also going to want a JavaScript file called app.js. And app.js will be the JavaScript entry point for the application. All right, so the first thing we'll wanna do is get some HTML structure here. I'm just gonna paste in some boilerplate HTML that we've all seen before. Let's give this a title of ng-cribs. 
And the next thing we'll want to do is get the CDN links put in here to reference all of the scripts and CSS that we'll need. So back over here in Chrome, the first thing that I'll grab is AngularJS. So again, at this download button, we'll just copy all of this, paste it down here below the body. And I guess I'll need a script tag for that. So we can create one script and we can do source equal to the script. The next one we will get is the bootstrap references. So let's copy this link for the CSS and we'll paste it just below title. And then we won't really need the JavaScript from the regular bootstrap framework for this. So we'll leave that for now. And then we'll go over here to our CDNJS listing for UI bootstrap and let's grab UI bootstrap minified version and we'll paste that in. Again, I need my script tags. We'll also get the templates, the minified version as well. All right, so those are the scripts that we will need and let's just do a little welcome message here to make sure we're good. And why don't we try this out in the browser? So if we come over here to Google Chrome and we open up a new window, let's go to localhost slash ngcribs. And depending on how you have your map set up, this might require you to put in a colon and then maybe a port like 8080. And in my case, I think it's port 80 that it defaults to. All right, so there we have our message, hello ngcribs. Let's make sure that we've got all of the code coming in properly. So if we go over here, we see that we've got our bootstrap styles coming in. And then Angular's come in as well. And let's see about UI bootstrap, that's good. And we're good with the templates as well. Okay, so all of the JavaScript and CSS that we made reference to is coming in just fine, but now we need to actually bootstrap our application. And so what does that mean exactly? Bootstrapping is just sort of the way that the application gets itself going. That's kind of how we can think of it for now. And the way that we do that is we have to provide the Angular object with a module name. And in our case, we're gonna wanna call this ngcribs. And so this is the way that we register a module. And the second argument is going to be an array of any dependencies, any other modules that we wanna make reference to and pull into the application. So in our case, we've got UI Bootstrap as a third party dependency. And so we'll want to say UI Bootstrap is our injected module that we wanna make reference to there. And so again, module here is going to register a new module, in our case called ngcribs, and it's going to make a reference to another third-party dependency that we'll want to pull into the application. So if we save that and come over here to our index.html, we have to make a reference, of course, to our app.js script. So let's put a new script tag in. We'll say the source is equal to app.js. We'll save that. The way that we actually make use of the module now that we've registered it is we have to put it on one of our HTML elements somewhere within the page. And the most common one to use is the body tag. So here we're gonna say ng app is equal to ng cribs. And what this does now is anything within the body tag is going to be made available to the application. If we had say a div within the body tag here and we did the same thing, we did ng app is equal to ng cribs. In this case, anything within here in the div tags will be available to the application, but anything outside of it would not be if we took this out. But that's not what we want. We want to have everything inside the body tag be made available to the application so that we can have the whole page be part of the app. So let's save that and let's go back over to the browser just to make sure that nothing broke on us. If we refresh, we're still getting our message. And once again, let's check the source. We make sure that we've got our application module coming in, we do. And that is about it for now. In the next lecture, we're going to see how we can start making use of some of Angular's features.